Next question we get a lot. Divorce is a very expensive. Every case is different. How much does a divorce usually cost? So the, I'll give you three ranges, and this is based on my experience in this business and, of course, kind of relevant to the Chicagoland area, but it gives you some idea. So I give people three basic ranges. So let's call it a World War III divorce. I talk about it in my book, sort of the, the nightmare situation where the case is litigated from the beginning through trial and potentially even post-trial. But let's talk about just getting all the way to a divorce judgment. This type of case takes anywhere from a year to three plus years in the Chicagoland area, depending on where the case is occurring and the, and the facts of the case and, and the people involved, of course. So depending on if you're in that situation, you're in a World War III litigation case, you'll easily spend well north of fifty to $75,000 a person. So I always tell people figure 100,000 plus combined, consider the marriage paying those bills. So north of 100,000 between the two people on up to two, $300,000 if people go crazy and the issues are complex. So the more things you fight about, the more it costs. It's just like building a house. You build a bigger house, it costs more money. You add more bells and whistles, it costs more money. So the more issues that you're fighting about, the more money is spent. And uh, that it's time equals money in a divorce case, like many other things. So that's World War III. The next step is sort of moderate litigation where the case is ultimately settled, usually before trial. There's no need to have a trial. There's a moderate amount of discovery, so exchanging information in the case. And a decent amount of negotiating goes on to reach a conclusion. That's a Twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars proposition per person, and and so you're looking at fifty to a hundred thousand dollars to give you again a broad range. Uh, that is a fairly common circumstance, and and now I'll talk about the low end and a couple of recommendations about the low end. If people and my book is all about keeping things efficient and trying to keep your cost of divorce down, and the costs are more than people expect. People just think of attorneys' fees, but what about your emotional cost? What about the damage it has on your career? What about the emotional cost for you, your family, your friends? The opportunity cost, what else could you be doing that's better than being spending all your time dealing with your divorce lawyer and all that? So there are many costs of divorce I talk about in the book and I talk with my clients about. So when you consider all those, the costs are, are much more extensive than fees. But let's talk about the low end. The low end is typically... I would say five to fifteen thousand dollars per person, depending on again on the circumstances. And on the extreme low end, I'll sort of add a fourth, is is sort of semi DIY or what I call a kitchen table or one person divorce or one attorney model. In in that model, and I'll talk about processes to help people understand. There are really a, there are a few major ways to handle a divorce. One is traditional litigation in court. I describe these in the book in detail. Two, mediation, using a neutral third party to help mediate issues in a case. Typically, you should have lawyers to help advise you because the mediator isn't your lawyer. The mediator is a neutral person and they can't give legal advice. They can't tell you if a deal is a good deal or a bad deal, for example. Lawyers can tell you, here are the things you should be looking for. Here's what you should watch out for, et cetera. So having some guidance from an attorney is important even in mediation. Next, collaborative practice. My book in some ways is a love letter to collaborative law because I think it's an excellent model for resolving divorces. In the collaborative model, both attorneys are mediation trained. They're also collaboratively trained. The lawyers and the parties sign an agreement to basically play nice in the sandbox. They exchange information voluntarily. We have meetings once a month in an office, not in court, and we negotiate the divorce in a step-by-step -step organized fashion like a series of business meetings. We bring in other professionals to help with the process, divorce coaches, financial neutrals, um, and, and these folks help with the divorce process to make it far more efficient. Um, those are ways to keep costs down, both emotional and financial. And then uh, th that extreme end, uh, if you're able to really cooperate to a high degree and you have a fairly simple case, the one attorney model, or you might call it a one and a half attorney model, is probably the most efficient. In the one and a half attorney model, 
the parties have one of the, we can only represent one person ethically. We can't represent both. But if they trust each other, they have a high degree of trust and visibility with the financials, for example. Maybe they're not fighting about the children or they don't have kids. In that case, they have the client hires us. We prepare the documents to some extent in the open, meaning we prep the documents after the person tells us this is what we want. We create all the divorce documents, get everything ready, send it to the other person when it's ready. And we're not, we can't advise the other person, so we're not giving them legal advice. We recommend they get an attorney to review everything. Basically say, yes, this is, these are the terms you agreed to. This is okay. And then they go get divorced and they file in court only when everything's done. So it's extremely efficient because DIY divorce is very difficult still. Even if you have a simple divorce, the court processes are a hassle. And they're, they're convoluted. And despite the efforts of a lot of well-meaning people in the pro bono community and the uh, legal help community, and those efforts are ongoing and they keep getting better. Uh, the companies like Hello Divorce are helping dramatically with that. Uh, it's still convoluted and difficult in, in most states. So getting an attorney even to advise you and hold your hand through that process is well worth the investment. And it's not a huge investment to have an attorney hold your hand and, and escort you through that. Some lawyers aren't willing to do that. Um, you know, we're willing to help people. If they're, if they need some consultation, we're willing to meet them where they are and do that for them. So um, that's certainly not our bread and butter. We handle cases with entrepreneurs, business owners, um, complex divorce cases, but we're more than willing to help somebody who just needs a few hours of assistance on a consultation basis also. So those, that gives you the spectrum of, both expense, time, and complexity. I hope that helps uh, your audience and ho helps answer the question. Yeah, I like what you said about collaborative divorce, but I imagine a lot of times you see clients come in that they do mean well, they do want it to be collaborative, but their soon-to-be ex-spouse wants to fight. They're pissed off. Is there anything you can do in the beginning or even once the train has left the station where you can recommend maybe getting on the same page or not hire it, hoping that your ex doesn't hire that shark lawyer that, that wants to go after everything? Yeah, and if they go for that swamp creature, the I call them, the, the people that just all they love is World War III litigation because that's how they make money. Uh, I talk about that in the book. I talk about, and I, and I don't demonize divorce lawyers. I mean, the, yes, there are some kind of people that I don't I don't appreciate or approve of how they operate, but most divorce lawyers are well-intentioned, but we're trained in litigation. You know, we're, there's, there, I pointed out in the book there at, at law school, there are typically most law schools have like one or two classes on alternative dispute resolution. <laughs> and the rest is all based on litigation and trial practice. So that our emphasis in training is all about court and, and very little about alternative dispute resolution. Then we come into the divorce world where clients really want alternative dispute resolution, or we call ADR. They want mediation. They don't want to fight. They don't want World War III. Your question is well taken, and that is, how do I try to steer my spouse in that direction? One is be nice. <laughs> so it sounds simple, but try to take the temperature, uh, lower the temperature. Um, listen to the other person. Try to get a counselor involved early. Even if you know you're getting divorced, a counselor can help dramatically with the out processing. With, you know, it's like an exit interview on an ongoing basis. A counselor is incredibly valuable about communicating with your soon to be ex, communicating with your family, your friends, your children. They're professionals. They know how to do this stuff. Um, a lawyer is a poor substitute for a counselor. Well, we, we, we counsel you, we'll tell you stuff. You pay, pay us by the hour. I always tell people, I'll tell you things my dad used to tell me for free, but you have to pay me by the hour. And like, calm down, take the long view, be reasonable. You know, these things, it's, it sounds simple, easy to say, hard to do in the moment. Um, but those things are very important. Keeping your cool, taking the long view, uh, not being petty, uh, spend money on, you know, if they want to go spend some money, let them spend some money. Don't freak out about them charging some stuff on the credit card. No, that can go to extremes, but people start locking down and getting into combat and the little eye for an eye stuff accelerates and, and spirals. And then next thing you know, 
somebody hires a nasty divorce lawyer, you know, a shark, and it, it devolves. And, mm -hmm. and then where are you left? Even if you hire a nice guy, divorce lawyer or lady, they have to deal with the shark on the other side. And just defending that is expensive. So try to defuse the situation whenever possible. I would say try to help educate your spouse with books like mine and say, say something like, don't listen to me, read this book, you know, or, you know, Google it yourself. Don't, you know, don't take it from me. I read this from this guy. I don't even know this guy. Mm -hmm. um, and look at other resources like that. Look at the collaborative law websites, you know, Google collaborative practice. And I always encourage my clients to tell their spouse, do independent research. You know, you don't have to take it from me. We always recommend two or three collaborative attorneys that we like working with and have had great success with. And I'll always say, if they don't like that, they can just go to the website and pick somebody else. You know, mm -hmm. these, I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus or pull any tricks on anybody. Uh, it's out of a genuine desire to see people succeed. Mm -hmm. and because if, if that person is happy, usually it makes my client happy and the divorce happens more efficiently. And the number one indicator of client satisfaction in divorce cases is what we call TTC, time to close. How long does it take to get done? That's why the title of the book, like you said, I just want this done. Nobody likes divorce cases to take a long time. They're not fine wines. They don't age well, you know? So if we can do something to make it more efficient, and help people along the path, whether it's litigated, collaborative, mediation, then we're doing a good service for a client. Hopefully we'll get to a point where you, somebody will just buy the book, drop it in front of their uh, soon to be ex, have the conversation and say, let's, let's talk. It yeah, it's, it's, it's been happening. I, the book's been out for, I mean, almost a couple of years and I'll have people say, I gave it to my wife and, and she's going to read it or listen to the audio book. And, I asked her to, you know, the thing is you can pick chapters that are relevant. So like listen to the chapter that's about the difference between collaborative litigation and, and mediation. So you understand the differences and the pros and cons because each system has pros and cons. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's very counterintuitive because as you said, easy to talk about, hard to do when you're the person that's emotionally charged, but really embracing, almost faking it, even if you have to, this kind yeah. of empathy, this like, really just putting on at your best face because you do your, your goal is to get to this result where it is. I want this done. I want to save money. I want this to be easier on my kids. Right. And unfortunately the only way to really go about that is to put yourself in your uh, soon to be ex's shoes and, and kind of help them and be cooperative again, uh, normalizing the fact that that's very difficult to do, yes. but a good mindset to keep in mind, like, what is my goal here? It's like, what do they say? Like uh, people get divorced so they don't have to fight anymore. So yes. let's, let's get to that point. Yep. And it's, it's the whole fake it till you make it thing. Uh, you're going to, you'll be, be so glad that you took the high road later. It, and not just because it helps defuse the situation and get things done more efficiently, but even if you're in litigation, maybe especially if you're in litigation, I talk about the meta case before Facebook stole the term meta, M-E-T-A. And it is the case that's bigger than the facts and the law. So we always think of a divorce case as, what are my facts and what's the law? My kids, the, the money, these things, that's the case. Well, in a divorce case, there's actually a lot more going on around the case. And that is, how are the in-laws interacting with you? How are the kids dealing with you? How is the guardian ad litem uh, what's the guardian ad litem's impression of you if you have a dispute about custody? Are you coming across as a reasonable person? Do you seem like a jerk? How does the judge think about you and your lawyer? Maybe the judge doesn't, maybe the judge thinks your lawyer has a bad reputation. You might not even know that. Well, all those things add up and, and they add X percent of, of uh, impact on the outcome of your case. And the meta case can be so important. The meta case can be so critical to things like custody. And when the judge is on the fence, does the judge decide in your favor or in your spouse's favor? Well, that could matter. If the judge thinks you're unreasonable based on your past behavior in the case, 
like the judge had to enter some temporary order because you weren't behaving well. Well, how is the judge going to think about you down the road? The, the meta case is so critical and people overlook it. They think, oh, it's just, it's just the facts and the law. Once I get to a trial, the judge will understand. Yeah, well, the court and everybody involved in the case gets to know you and your spouse and they have a memory and people remember through that lifeline, the lifespan of a case and they don't forget. So if somebody's a jerk during the case and the word gets out, you're damaging the meta case dramatically at, in, against you. And it's hard to turn that around. So the meta case has a huge impact, not only on your spouse and your kids directly by hopefully making them a little happier and making things easier for them and ultimately for you, but also benefits you in terms of dollars and cents potentially and how long it takes and the outcome with custody at the end. I hope that helps. So much good stuff in here, Rayford. I appreciate you uh, being on the podcast today and uh, recommend everybody, especially if you're thinking about it, going through it, a gift for a friend. I just want this done. This is book. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, Rayford, let people know where, where they can find you. You can find me online. It's easy to find me, uh, Rayford Palmer. I'm on Twitter at Rayford Palmer, TikTok at Rayford Palmer, um, Chicagoland Divorce Lawyer on TikTok, um, Instagram at Rayford Palmer. The law firm is STG Divorce Law. We're very easy to find on Google. Uh, if you just look at look up STG Divorce Law. Also, my book website is IJustWantThisDone.com. And uh, find us on Amazon and Audible. The book's got great reviews and people love it. So uh, give us your feedback. Always happy to improve. And I'm working on book two right now. Thank you, Rayford. Appreciate you. Thank you, Rob. Take care.